Good evening, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for December 5th at 7.05 p.m. This meeting is being audio and video, re video recorded per the open meeting laws of the state of Massachusetts. Tonight we have a number of special permit requests as well as some discussions with regard to 84 Cleveland Street. Uh, first at 7.07 we are going to have a 4 and 6 Hill Street special permit. They have asked, we have a letter in our packages, um, the attorney for 4 and 6 Hill Street has asked for this to be con continued to 3619. So could I have a motion to continue that special permit request till 31619 at 7 o'clock? I make a motion that we uh, continue the special permit hearings for 4 and 6, four and six Hill Street, the special permits, until uh, 316, uh, March 16th at um, 36. 3616 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall here at Room 24, 124. 3619, right? You don't want to do it in 2016, yeah. do you? No, no, March. Okay. March, March, March It'd be amazing if you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have a second? I second it. Okay. It's been a long day, Joe. Yes, it has. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The second request is going to be a 6th Street, 6 Hill Street appeal. Um, at this time, I'm going to recuse myself from this uh, discussion, motion, and vote. And Amy, if you would holler at me in the hallway. Once you're all set with that. Yeah, and I need a motion to uh, continue this to uh, February 6, 2019, the uh, appeal for 6 Hill Street. Do I make a motion for that, please? I make a motion that we uh, continue the six, 6 Hill Street appeal to February 6, 2019, at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Town Hall, room 124. Any discussion? Second. Second. Okay. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Someone want to tell Chris we're good yeah. to go? Yes. <clears throat> they handled that all right, Amy? Perfect. Good. <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> you're no longer chair, you're now in the Conservation Commission. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is 7:10. Uh, our next uh, hearing is scheduled as 9 Fruit Street, scheduled at 7:15. But since we have a little bit of time, what well, we are going to entertain. We'll do minutes at all? Do we hmm? get minutes out of the way? No, I think we're going to entertain um, okay. Fisher Hassan. We're going to oh. discuss um, with with Bill from Beta uh, the 84 Cleveland Street project. And I guess Bill, I'm going to ask first for you to just give us a um, an overview of I think you um, you would ask you had done a review of the drainage system as well as the um, cost to complete for a bond so if, if you want to start then we'll have Fisher and then if um, our esteemed guest uh, Mr. McCarthy town planner wants to weigh in we'll let him as well okay so go ahead Bill thank you Mr. Chairman uh, so yes uh, beta was requested to look at the the site prepare a construction bond for the work uh, left to be completed, as well as review the drainage system to the extent that we could. Uh, the system had already been been installed, so um, what we were able to do is get about 340 photographs from the contractor uh, at various stages of the construction. Uh, look at those uh, so that we could have an idea of how the, the system was installed underground. Uh, we prepared a memo, uh, I believe, dated November 30th. Uh, to, the, to the board uh, outlining our findings and I, I would say in general based on uh, the information we had we also did a, a site visit uh, to look at what we could on the surface uh, that, that we're comfortable that the drainage has been installed properly um, to the town standards in terms of uh, pipe bedding installation uh, structures we believe have, have been installed properly so um, I think we did ask that uh, the developer provide a statement um, to the effect that they'll certify that the drainage has been installed per town standards. So I think that's something that, that the board needs to see. Uh, in terms of the performance bond, um, we went out, looked at the site, reviewed the, uh, the final construction plans, uh, and did an estimate of, of work to be completed. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which generally includes final paving, uh, landscaping, 
um, curbing, berm, lighting, land, uh, loam and seed, sidewalk work. Um, and we estimated that work to be, I believe, about $600,000 plus or minus. Um, now that work included everything on site, um, roadway, which I would call the public space, the roadway sidewalks, and sort of the public space between the units. Uh, it also included um, the private space, if you will, uh, the yards in front of the units, the driveways to the units, uh, walkways for the units. Um, <coughs> looking at it, I would say from a bonding standpoint, uh, protection and surety for the town, it probably doesn't make sense to require a bond for the, the private spaces, rather focus on the, the public spaces um, that are kind of shared by by all the all the units, so um, I think if you, and, you know, Fisher did an estimate of uh, the cost of those private spaces was about eighty-eight thousand dollars, I think. So, if you look at the overall bond, the six hundred plus or minus that we had for the overall work, less the eighty-eight thousand, I think that would probably be the the amount you'd be looking to bond overall. Okay. And I think the board has to. Make a decision about how you want the the developer to to handle that bond. Okay, thank you, Bill. Any questions for Bill at this time? Before G we uh, you just what is the significance of this and this? Are these the same thing? You know what I mean? It's it, it basically he is on um, beta. We asked beta to do a cost and complete, which is the six seventy seven. Okay. What Fisher did was on an Excel oh. sheet. If you notice, he has the six sixteen, which oh. is everything but the contingency, and then he did what he felt those costs were and again some of the differences uh, beta has to do it as if the town went in had to do uh, bids and get the work done Fisher did it from a standard of, a, of what a builder would pay to do it okay so they were just he was showing a little bit of the differences got it we'll actually um, discuss this and decide how we want to bond this again okay. this is this project was a little different from Boyd's Crossing in that I think there was a lot of there was a lot of things that they wanted to be done and reviewed that really didn't get passed over from town planner to town planner. So that's why, as Bill stated, he had to review the drainage post installation. Got it. And, um, and I think the bond is one of those items that was sort of uh, passed over that we're now picking up on incorrectly. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Bill at this moment? Um, <coughs> yes, sir. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Um, actually, the, the, the issue, the Beta did their job in, in making sure that every item is is is, is uh, enumerated and and um, actually uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how they came up with some of the numbers the per unit cost uh, but uh, I mean I, I I don't blame them for trying to protect the town and making sure that you know every every thing is very uh, cautious on uh, um, you know and, and conservative every number but like <coughs> I mean I have it in the contract uh, they the per ton price for for hot mix asphalt they quote it as 185 or 200 I have it in the contract for for 80 80 dollars a ton versus 200 dollars a ton uh, the the loom they quoted at 40 dollars a yard which I don't know where that number comes from there is nobody that sells loom for any more than $22 a yard and oh by the way I have all that loom on site in this big stockpile because this, this used to be a, a big pig farm and there's a lot of loom on it and uh, so <coughs> but re regardless I, like I said they, it's it's their, it's their duty to make sure that everything's accounted for uh, because for all we know tomorrow I could go and sell that loom and do something stupid like that, which I wouldn't. But uh, so, so I can I can understand where, where what they're doing. But uh, um, the number I came up with, like I have a bid to, uh, right now, and I'm happy to show sh uh, a, a proposal to show it to you uh, for all the the planting inventory, for the, all the landscaping, not the unit landscaping, the site landscaping. Um, at forty-two thousand dollars, they had it listed at one fifty or forty-eight. So in my view, no matter how you look at it, it shouldn't exceed 175, every, every single item that's there. <coughs> that's why um, you know, I made that list. Um, so 
as far as the, the, the letter of that uh, uh, Beta and the board asked for, we're, we're, I'm happy to do that, but I wanted to go beyond that letter to s about the, the, the uh, drainage components meet, meeting the minimum standard. I requested, and I'm getting a complete por uh, profile of all the specifications of every single component, and I will provide it to you along with the letters, just so you have that. And, and that's coming from the actual supplier. Okay, great. And you don't mind if Bill reviews that, correct? Absolutely not. I, I, I was going to give them a copy and Absolutely. you a copy. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so uh, I beg your understanding about this, please. Okay. Kay. Thank I you. I have a question? Sure. I'm looking at your spreadsheet, Bishop, and I just wanted to understand. One, they included, um, you know, they included the... Uh, Uh, beta, uh, for example, I'm looking at the um, s uh, cedar split rail fence, which both of you agreed there was 712, whatever it is, linear feet, I'm guessing, okay? And the cost is 40, and that you agreed on, except that um, you say that there's only 110 remaining. So does that mean that 602 has already been done, or I don't understand what the... This, is, this was provided to me by the road contractor, mm -hmm. whom I have a contract with. Um, and uh, and uh, the, according to them, there's only one ten. Uh, gotcha. Okay. So in this, in some cases, the price is different because you are getting it cheaper than Beta believes th the right. price is, and in other cases, it's a, a, a difference of, of a quantity. Okay. Questions for Fisher? Right. Rich, would you like to add anything here? What? What I wouldn't like to have uh, consideration is that at least the future homeowners know, you know, some consent from them when they buy in that the, you know they are buying into a private condominium association, and while we are uh, providing some surety for the road, it's ultimately a private development. So I, I want you know to buyer beware that what they're buying into because. Um, you know, typically when we have a subdivision, we're taking care of the, the roadway and then the site is really left up to them. But these are kind of integrated in a way. I just want people to, future residents, because I know from past experiences, we do get the calls about condominium developments and when it's going to be finished and so forth and what assurances are there to make sure that all this work is done. And I just, you know, I want them at least just as a preventive measure, say, hey, you know, this is what you're buying into, so be aware it's going to take some time, and plus it's the onus is on We're not going to go in there and, and do all this work because it is a private development. You know, there's kind of that uh, maybe misconception, I think, sometimes buyers think that uh, well, we can go in there and do this work, but it's actually a private, private property. So, so in the case where where a condo development <coughs> stalled, the developer left, and left semi-built buildings and just that binder coat down, for example, and somebody else comes in with the intention of completing this project, who would be responsible for completing the roadway? The, the, the new developer that would come in? Or would the town have some authority to say, hey, gee, this, this stuff needs to be paid you know, kind of like the hill over here. You, you know what I mean? Where we had that problem on the hill. You know, so I'm just kind of just trying to just yeah. Trying to go so the I guess the the difference on the hill is that there is a, a separate roadway that is becoming that as part of the development. It was a, a a separate layout roadway that is becoming a public way. Okay. So it's not integrated as part of the overall development, mm -hmm. and then off of that is the private okay. development. Um, so there's that kind of distinction that I just feel that it's good for the folks who buy in there to know that. How do you handle it on the planning board side? I guess a good one, because it's pretty easy because it's only nine units, uh, Nichols Way. You've got nine, how was that handled? So in other words, uh, could you give us a little bit of sure. So handled? Sure, in, so in the case of Nichols Way or any other subdivision, you know, the developer comes in. Nichols and Way is the one off of, um, uh, 
here, Holbrook Street mm -hmm. as you're going down towards 115. It's a nine units, so it's sort of an easy one to yeah. visualize. Yeah, so what what the what the planning board gets from the developer is is a bond. So actually, f typically you start off with a covenant. That's that's in place, so you can't sell off or convey out lots. They do their work, the developer, when they're ready to come in to get lot releases from the binder up. We'll get a cost estimate from an engineer, and that's going to cover everything that's within that that roadway. So the sidewalks, the grass strips, utilities that aren't really not finished, the drainage structures, everything on the private lot that's up to the homeowners. So you know we don't we don't cover that. In the event the developer walked away, then then the planning board would you know invoke the surety and then complete that work. So there is that you know protection, so to speak, in that case, um, and that's. And then it's either, you know, a passbook, a tripartite agreement is another form, and I guess maybe performance bonds aren't available um, today. So, you know, there's, and even though technically, you know, until the road becomes a public road, um, we still have, it's still protected by the town. We, the planning board treats it as it would be a public way eventually. Any question, Joe? No. no. So, so in the case where this is, this is not going to be a public way. Right. Um, does our jurisdiction come, can, can any, let, suppose this was not a 40B, would we have say with respect to bonding this, or is the developer just kind of free to do what they want to do on private property? They're free. I mean, they're good example. They're free, actually. We're so not so do, we have, do we have some jurisdiction on this because it's a 40B? So therefore, can we... Can we say, hey, listen, you have to have a bond for X amount, even though it's private property? We, is we that what's going on? Crossing yeah, yeah. Private, you do. So we bonded Boys Crossing. Okay. It was just this difference but, but, but because it's a 40B? Yeah. Is that no, where we get our jurisdiction? Just protecting the town's interest is what we did it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this project had a different set of attorneys, so therefore there was, there was they, they didn't really address the bonding as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the difference. At, at Boys Crossing, we had percentages of bonding. If you remember, he built so many units, he gave us a bond. Then we released it. Then he did another did the other phase. Yeah, okay. I think it was 16, 16, or uh, yeah. So, so one of the thoughts I had is, is there's 32 units here. You know, we asked Fisher maybe to bond a third of it. Now he builds the third. He comes back to us. He then does another bond for the next third, another bond for the next third, just to so that he's not bonding, and for rough numbers, somewhere between five and six hundred thousand dollars, he can bond one third of that. 200,000, bond 200,000, bond 200,000. Um, that's one thought. We can discuss that at length a little bit later if we want. But do something like that so that it, a covenant's great before <coughs> for someone as they're getting rolling. I don't think Fisher needs that in this case, and it requires him to keep coming back to us um, to, to release lots. In this case, we can you know, do 11 units or 10 units, then come back to us, do 10 units, come back to us. And we have a bond for those 10 units. So that's one thought we could explore. Okay. So does that ensure that, let's say, public safety needs to get into these units, that they have a, a proper access to these? Is that what this does? That if he was to walk away and people are living there, at least there'll always be the ability to make sure we have a safe public way to get to these, all, or safe uh, roadway to get to the... A safe roadways, right. uh, the, the, uh, all structures that aren't, quote, um, loom-related, seating-related are right. done. Right. Yeah. Same thing, just say they don't finish it, but if people right. are living there, we have a way to finish it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and just, just a clarification. So if you do this in phases, a third, a third, and a third, mm -hmm. if you will, then does the, for example, does the first third get 100% complete, loom, seed, final coat in the street, and so forth? Is that what happens? If it doesn't, the next bond would, incl would, would inc include that. Oh, okay. Yeah, the next okay. bond would include it. Similar. Okay. I, I, and your point's correct, because you're probably thinking of the roadway. He's not going to do his final pavement until, until the very end. Right. So he's yeah. going to yeah, keep jumping that into his next bond. Okay, right. got And I think, see. Bill, you're, you you don't have an issue with this if we decide <clears throat> to go this route? No, no, I think that's fine, and I, I think it's been done before. Um, and again, it's it provides protection for the town. It provides protection. For people that may be living there as it's partially built out, <coughs> so I, I, I think it's a good mechanism to do it. Okay. Okay. It's always a catch-22 because the more I finish before the project is done, the more damage is going to happen to it. Uh, so, and, and, and the less I finish, yeah. 
the more people are going to complain. So <coughs> I've been I've been trying. I mean, as you see at, in Boyd's, which I'm not bringing it as, as it's a different project. <coughs> we 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 built all the the houses, even though the, some of them are not sold. All the walkways, all the landscaping in the cent in the green is done in the mm -hmm. center. Um, just to make sure that uh, uh, the the residents there are not shortchanged by not having those like the walkways and the services. Um, uh, so, so in the case of Lakeland Farms, like you said, okay, what if, if we do the first, let's say, 11 units, and then it's time for me to come back to you for the next 11 mm -hmm. units, uh, Beta will do an, the same kind of a thing, because I might have finished 50% of the landscaping okay. or 60% of the walkways, yeah. but 0% of the s top coat. Okay. So they'll come back and say, all right, now the new bond is whatever the number yeah. is, and then, and then you the board will decide that okay based on that we will need will require uh, m more bond or less bond or whatever okay. and then and then I'll we'll we'll agree on a number and then you can release the next 11 and then the ne last 10 got it okay and i think what we can <coughs> do Fisher, is we can actually use your spreadsheet and you can come back to us at the 11 units and you can identify maybe add in actuals completed yeah and then you'll have your balance then you'll have your balance to complete yeah. and we'll go from there um, I would like to use, because I think I think Bader's correct, you have to look at it as if, if the town did have to go in. You have to take the most conservative view. Yep. So I would say I would like to use 600000 as the total and say one-third, so the bond would be for 200000 The first bond would be for 200000 second bond would be 200000 third bond would be 200000 Does that... Can we, can we just make sure, I mean, the, there no. are house-related <laughs> items. You know, like house construction. Well, I mean, it, it would be really not fair to say, all right, well, you, we have to bond all the driveways for every, every all the houses, which what they did is included in that oh. 600 number. Why, yeah. why, are my, why are you obligating me to build all the driveways before the houses are up? Right. And, and next, next thing will be, okay, the foundations, and then the house. You know, this but is again, like you're, not, you're gonna do 11 driveways, and even though you're not gonna do them, I'm gonna let you carry that to the next bond. I but and I'm again, I'm using, this, I'm using actually your six, uh, beta 677, but I'm, I'm taking out the 77, which I'm saying is your deduct interior work. So that's whatever. what I'm coming I mean, with wh Whatever 000. you feel is fair. I, I think 200, I, you want a 174, I don't think 100,000 is a bad. Pardon me? You want a 174 as your but I want a 174 for the whole 32 yeah, units. <laughs> <laughs> this will work just now as well Now you're reducing you. the units and this increasing the number. This will work just as well for you. I think it's a good compromise. You're paying beta. I want to make sure you get your money's worth, right? Oh, yeah. We went hard and worked on this for you. Does that sound fair? Does, will you work with that? I think that's, that's not That's fine. A, I think it, yeah, and whatever you carry, you carry the next one. That's fine. Is that, does that seem fair to the board? Yeah, I understand your point, though. You, you, you are saying what, what we're doing, we're, we're taking the entire pro the project in its entirety. Yes. In, in saying <clears throat> that, in what Bishop is saying, he's saying, well, as opposed to take it in its entirety at $600,000, take it in, in, in stages, you, you know. Uh, so I, and I, I understand. I don't know what it costs to, to, what, what you, what it costs to, to get a $600,000 bond. I have no idea what that is. But that's why I said we'll break it in thirds so that he's only having to get a $200,000 bond. Right, right, right. Make it ease it a little bit, but still protect the town and the people, to Rich's point, protect the people who are moving in there that know that, you know, I'm being, we're being, everything will be completed in this section. And you're doing this by way of putting money in the passbook account, the $200,000? Like we did, what well, we did in, in um, oh, it looks, I'll just give you a check, you put it in. in okay, it. all right. Is that what you do? Is that how you bond these? Is that what you do? You, do you take? Yeah, that's one way. Yep. Just take, just take yeah, that. Take two hundred thousand dollars. Put it yep. in the passport. And, and we hold it. Correct. Oh, you, you don't go to like an insurance company or something? The insurance so company stopped doing that. Apparently, for projects. it's kind of. Oh. Yeah, that's news to me. It's I was different for construction versus what he's doing. Construction, we can get bonds for seven hundred thousand, and they and they do. They're costly. It's about three and a half, four percent. Right. We pay for these bonds a year. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, but uh, it's different in the real estate market because obviously it's much more risky than a contract. So Th this can work, and the other option developers do do not in this case because um, where it is in the in the uh, prog project stage is tripartite agreement. So the money that they would borrow to build all that infrastructure would be an agreement between the developer, the bank, and the town. So for example, you know, I, 
again, if they were to walk. Would the, would the, would the bank fund some of that bonding? Is that what you're so the money he's borrowing to pay for that work, yeah. we're in agreement, you know, that we would have access to that as oh, well. Oh, oh. But he's already kind of advanced past that stage in this yeah. case. But okay, I see. And that's something, again, if we started from the beginning, we would have. How many foundations do they have in so far? Do you know? I think it's like five or six I thought I saw, or is it more than that? More than like ten. Ten, uh, really? Good. Mr. Chairman, if I understand, is <coughs> what we're talking about, and we're talking about the, the one third, one third, one third. The, the real question here is, are we using the six hundred thousand, which is Beta's estimate of the entire project, or are we using, which is about fifty-eight thousand per segment? Okay, which is what um, Bisher is saying his true costs are. Am I correct? That's really we're using the Beta's is. because. If, if something, God forbid, happened to Bisher and the town had to go in, they we, would, we would have to use the, the Davis-Bacon Act. We'd have to get use prevailing wage law. So what Bisher pays would certainly not be what the town would have to pay. I got you. We would have to pay okay. what Beta put together, which is the estimate that would be the town, the t correct? It, that's correct. And, and just to be clear, the, the numbers are based on primarily MassDOT's average unit bid prices that they publish based on a number of bids every year. So that they're, they're, they're based on something. They're, they're not just numbers that we made up. D uh, does this warrant any review of some of the some of the potential discrepancies between what you think you're going to need? For example, we talked about, we talked about um, 100, 110 feet of split rail, split rail fence versus you guys said 710. I mean, is it worth? I'm conceding that point. We're going to, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, uh, don't, don't fight when you've won. Okay. Um, we're going to use, I'm we're gonna, that's that. not I mean, a good strategy. We're going to yeah. use beta stubber. Just, just, as we get closer to just completion, a comment for the record. we're going to edit okay. those, right? If, okay. if, if I, for some, something happens to me, it, in, in the, in the, from a practical perspective, the town is not going to need to get involved. The town, the only involvement the town will have is <coughs> the board of trustees that will be governing that, that uh, would be owning the roadways and the infrastructure, the, 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 the homeowners association, which, the board, which has a, a board of trustees, mm -hmm. will be coming to the town saying, oh, give us the money you guys have, we're gonna contract it out because this guy defaulted, okay? And they will, they will bid it out and they don't have an obligation to, I mean, I would, if anything happens to me, the contracts that I have already in place, by the way, the whole everything in place, I have what's left on my contract is $180,000 to finish everything, okay? So I would, f I would uh, uh, endorse that, con or, or, or forward that contract to the board, of that's from a practical perspective. Yeah, okay. So I think, I think you, you have abundance of cautions and abundance yes. of coverage, and okay. which, which is fine. Uh, but, but I am conceding that point, because within that bid, there is 32 driveways that are going for 32 houses like okay next thing okay 32 frames and 32 okay yeah. but that's okay i mean uh, it's fine thank you okay <coughs> any other questions okay so what i'd like is a motion to the bonding of two of six hundred thousand in total two hundred thousand for each phase of the project <coughs> For absolutely, two hundred thousand for the first bond, subject to change to a total of six hundred thousand dollars based on the beta estimate. Mm -hmm. So a first a bond of two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for the first eleven units, with the balance up to six hundred thousand dollars for the second and third phase. Okay. A bond in that amount. Okay. okay. So I make a motion that we. Um, have Bishop have Bishop provide a bond for two hundred thousand dollars for the first phase of Lakeland Farms. Eleven units. Eleven units. It's subject to be up to six hundred thousand dollars for the total for of the total of uh, all project, thirty-two units. Of all thirty-two units. Um, in three three phases. In three phases. Is there a time that has to be provided by? Is there a date? Uh, no, no. Just as long as it takes okay. for the project. So provided in that fashion. Then he'll return for the, the balance. Right, and he will return after each eleven units. And will return to us to the board for each eleven units for the next bonding. For the next bonding phase. Amount. Okay. For the for the amount of that time. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Second. Do you have a second? Second. Do you want to repeat it? <laughs> <laughs> we got that on tape, right? Yeah, can we oh, play that is. back again? Please? Any, repeat it like again as long. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Very Thank you both. Okay. okay. And um, you're going to provide us with the drainage report as soon as yes, you. Yes, I will. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's 7.35, at 7.35, okay, the, uh, I'll let these adult gentlemen, will we need to like, expecting him to uh, keep no, the, yeah, goes yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay, okay, it's you know, crazy, okay. thank you, I, I thought we were going to hear it tonight, yeah, yeah, so what are we doing thank next, you. continuance of time group, so it, uh, at now at 7.30, 7.38 p.m., uh, 9 Fruit Street. Uh, as you know, Amy has provided everybody with a, um, a drawings and um, a letter from Dave DeLuco, which was, uh, which, was, uh, which was requested, I think, by one of the members as his, his opinion mm -hmm. as to this bylaw. Right. Um, so we will review those at the next public hearing, but Mr. Brogan has asked for continuance due to a work a conflict this evening, and um, so he has asked for us to make a motion to continue his public hearing Till one two nineteen, at seven o'clock. So could I have that motion? Make a motion that we move the uh, hearing for Nine Fruit Street. Is this a special permit or Who? special permit? Yes. All right. For the special permit, continue it to uh, January second, twenty nineteen. Uh, time. Seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, here at Town Hall, room one twenty four. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, Just what? Did, uh, on the second, we would have the enclave, right? Yes. Okay. We have, we have enough time. We're going to do this first, right, and then we'll do the enclave after. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Just to accommodate. Okay. So we have a second. We have we a second. Have mm -hmm. um, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. At uh, at seven twenty, we had both the preserve at Abbeville and Abbeville Commons. Um, we continue to work with the developer. And uh, the town, in this case, because of conflicts by both our special counsel, Dan Hill, and our um, engineering reviewer, Sean Reardon, has asked for a continuance till December 20th. And our board members here have graciously agreed to, to move the meeting to December 20th instead of December 19th. And we will hear that at 7 o'clock p.m. So could I have a motion to move the Abbeville Preserves and Abbeville Commons till December 20th at 7 p.m.? I make a motion that we move the hearings for the preserve at Abbeville and Abbeville Com Commons to December 20th, 2019 at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. It is, um, is it oh. Town Hall currently? Town is that where we're? Or no. We'll no. We will be at the middle school, so. Hopefully we, things are. Yeah. Can I say to be turned? Say again? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so at the, uh, uh, the King middle, Phillip. King Philip um, Middle School Great. at 7 p.m. Right. On we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have, um, uh, Rich, I'm gonna let you talk a little bit about, let you talk a little bit about the B1 zoning <laughs> district planning committee. The middle school, was it? They're hoping in the middle school. The, uh, so earlier this year I applied for a, a grant through Mass Housing to look at uh, the zoning for the B1 district, which essentially what we're looking to do <coughs> is take a look at the existing requirements and match it up with the master plan vision what the town would, would like to see uh, develop over time for the center and make sure that the the requirements are kind of matching up with that vision to make sure there aren't conflicting um, requirements that are prohibiting that to happen um, so the the working committee is a, is a combination of a member from the Board of Appeals, Selectman, Planning Board, Advisory Board, and the Board of Health, and then four members from the public to serve on it, and it's, a, it's an advisory committee um, that would work with uh, myself and MAPC to uh, kind of roll up our sleeves, look at the zoning. You know, for example, we have the, you know, the built two line is, uh, has a, certain specific requirements six to 19 feet um, if you don't build on that line then you're required to get a special permit um, and that's kind of a design component to it but also um, in some cases it may not make sense 
based on a particular property, the way it gets built out. So, for example, somebody might want to have multiple buildings and different setbacks may make sense, and we want it that way, but yet we're putting them through a permitting process that we may not want to necessarily do that. Um, for example, in the bylaw right now, we have a, a zero-foot setback, but we also say that uh, you have to get, you know, so you can go up to the property line in the B1 zone, but yeah, we have that built to line that says six feet. So which is it, right? So if I want to go closer, do I have to get a special permit to do that or not? So those are some of the things that we're going to take a look at, along with uses as well. Um, there's other pieces to this, which is there's a stormwater um, piece that we're looking at, but the working committees would mostly be involved with the zoning aspects of it. Um, so I'm looking to have somebody. There will be evening meetings. Um, I don't think there'll be more than three or four, uh, maybe more than that, but I don't think so. Um, so it's really you know, there's a sounding <coughs> board as we go through these different things. Um, we'll have MAPC, they'll come in and we'll go over some of the zoning, talk about different development that occur throughout the region and kind of match things up and take a look at it. Does this uh, look at the like things like sewage? Yes. Right. Because I know it's always been a discussion about that district. Yeah, so as uh, what you may not be aware of is that um, so there is a development proposal for Dunkin' Donuts next to it. Mm -hmm. There's where the trees are being sold right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's an interest in uh, the, the owners of the property has come before the planning board. They're looking to do a, a mixed-use building, you know, commercial first floor and then apartments similar to the one next to Town Hall. And um, in the discussions when they came forward, um, sewer, mm -hmm. you know, came up because, you know, they have, so Dunkin' Donuts is on the same property, <coughs> so they would have two, you know, two buildings on one site, and they're trying to maintain Dunkin' Donuts to keep it open while they build this new building. So you start putting all these pieces together on the property along with the septic, right. it gets pretty challenging. So we are... Um, going to be looking to see if we can modify the wastewater permit for the plant here in center to be able to get capacity for them mm -hmm. to do that because they would like to put a restaurant in there, a full service restaurant in the center of town mm -hmm. that uh, you know would be a place that you know people can go to and you know which I think would be great to have in the center of town place that you can go to in your own town not and uh, besides going outside of town, right? You want to keep people in town a little right. bit. So we're just that's that part of it. I just know that there was always a discussion about trying to expand what we do for sewers in these areas to help with the development of this, yeah. this area. So the, the nice, at least the hope is because, you know, we have the plant which has a design flow. Um, there is, we know from the, at least from the water uses that the condominiums aren't, you know, they're not discharging anywhere near the design flow. Mm -hmm. So from at least the preliminary discussions with the DEP, they said, you know, there is a process that, you know, we'd have to hire engin professional engineers, look at the plant, but also, um, you know, design how the sewer would get there and everything, that there is this opportunity. So we're at the preliminary stage right now to hopefully uh, make that happen, which uh, as well as some other properties too. Right. Right. Just, just to clarify, this is the, the Borelli uh, sewer plant that we're talking about, correct? Yes. The water, yes. Treatment, water treatment plant. And, and, yeah. Now, who is the owner the town is of that plant? Is it now clear? You are. That <laughs> yeah. <We> are. <laughs> and everyone else in the room except for myself. <laughs> we, we are the owners, and, and currently, uh, who are the people who are paying in to use that? Uh, Walgreens, I assume? Yep, Walgreens, uh, Scylla, you know, that, that section, the condominiums, right. meeting house, and then the new condos on the other side that are uh, being done by Marina 20 mm -hmm. that are there. Um, the stop and shop property and the uh, and then the other property from between Liberty Lane over to town, uh, to Main Street, though they're paying as well for uh, the sewer. And then there's um, where the cell tower is actually mm -hmm. opposite the, uh, the condominiums, they're paying too. And that's still Borelli that's there. Borelli, but yeah. That's still Borelli. Is, is that new building that's being constructed right now, will that tie in? No. No. 
the plasma is generally known. Yeah, yeah that'd be regular septic. Yeah, that has an on-site septic system approved for it. Yeah. And actually, it will help the residents up at Meeting House because obviously, as more people go on the system, right. their costs will go down, right. and their costs, I guess, is rather high up there. Right, they're and the and the and the engineers, at least from the preliminary discussions, like you know, it would be, it's even better to get more flow into that plant. That's you know, it's been operational for a few years now, so. Um, so we, right now we're just going through the legal documents to make sure you know we can, we we believe we can do this, but it's a matter of do we, you know how we approach it. To from uh, from, from Dunkin' Donuts, that plant would require quite a bit of pumping. It would because yeah. there's a significant yeah. difference in elevation. It would, but I will say that they have priced out an on-site you know septic system for the property, which is. It's uh, just a little bit south of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, to them, it, it's there is the long view that they think actually, if we could, if the sewer can work, would be better for them to do it. So that's why they they are motivated Allows to do it. Larger building. Larger yeah, a larger building. Yeah. Right. It doesn't limit their their, their size. Oh, no, yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Well, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And the and if you're if you have a chance to go in Islington Center and Westwood, there is um, a cost from the, the um, new fire station there. There is a mixed-use building, and that's kind of their, the building that they kind of look towards that they would like to do here, which has, uh, you know, commercial first floor, and then there's 16 apartments there. In that particular case, they have parking on the ground. Mm. So they, depends, they might try to do that over there, which also could help their site so so I'm looking for a volunteer yep, Rich has asked for right, a volunteer right. from the zoning board who would like to get involved um, Devin has expressed interest yes that doesn't mean that we can't ask for somebody else on the board who might be interested in joining that Do we have any interest on the board of anybody who would like to participate in that I, I could probably jump in if Devin can't do it okay you know okay but um, but what else? you say about how many times does it meet because well, I'm estimating three to four times. Uh, three to there'll four be homework. times in total. Th three to four meetings. There will be homework outside the meetings, um, but homework. three to four. Homework, <laughs> Bob. Three to four meetings. <laughs> uh, you know what? My only problem is I, I'm self-employed. It's been shown that homework isn't effective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm self-employed, and I just sometimes I just get absolutely Dev Devin has agreed to do it. Uh, yeah, I, I have. I don't want to. I don't want to say we, let's nominate Devin if somebody else was interested. We obviously yeah. we have members who have been here for a long and time. And this is between now and when? When is it? Yeah, that's be the th time frame. Three or four meetings in what? Between now and well, I think May? Yeah. Uh, realistically, probably May, June, sometime. Yeah. We're yeah. Not, we wouldn't in earnest get started until after Christmas. So right, right. Uh, you're estimating about five or six months, right? Yeah. yeah right. Okay. And usually these things kind of the timeline usually kind of reflects the, the committee, their schedule. You know, it's mm -hmm. but. Uh, I did I did speak to Devin on the phone this afternoon and kind of briefed him on what it's about, mm -hmm. and he did express interest. But uh, I, I, know. I I talked to Mike and both him and I agree. I think Devin would be a good candidate. Only he's young. Yeah, sure. He's, um, he's in won. the business. He's yeah. in the business. Yeah. We um we we probably I hate to say it, we have to attract more young people to these com committees we as well about? as um, we want young people to stay about? in town. What are you talking about? <laughs> young, no, younger, younger, he said, younger. Young so, I feel like I'm in the middle ground here. Young I'm not people. sure how I feel about <laughs> this conversation. It's getting older. <laughs> but, but I think you've got to be careful which I'm side you raise your hand. Okay? <laughs> the young side yeah. or the old side? <laughs> <laughs> but I agree, we want to have somebody from our board on this committee. Yeah, and yes. if Devin's on it, that's great. If yep. Devin has a problem with it, then, like I said, I'd be one of the ones who yeah. back him up if he can't do it. But again, I'm sure it'd be nice. It doesn't preclude you from coming, by the way. You know, right, it's just right. That but he would be our representative. That'd be great. Yeah. That, right. I, think good. I guess I would make a, uh, I would ask for a motion to nominate Devin as the representative okay. to the ZBA, sure. yeah. to the Zoning District Metropolitan yeah. Planning Council Steering Committee. Right. Can I have that motion? Yeah. So moved. Right. Well, yeah, can I, I can't say so moved. No, I want you to repeat it. No, go ahead. I so repeat moved. it. Can I say so oh. moved? <laughs> can I say so moved? Do I have a second? I second it. Any, any discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor. favor. Aye. 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 Great. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Devin, yeah, wherever you are this yeah. evening. Yeah. I, I, I want to question for Rich. The four uh, public members of the committee, 
are they they need to be residents of the town or can they be actually even the developers themselves no no they don't need to be residents all right so it could yeah. be one of the developers who might yes be. Okay. Yeah. All right. so the the four representatives from the public are looking for two property owners that can be resident non-resident okay and business owners can be resident non-resident okay, okay. so yeah, Do they have to be property owners in the B1? They have to be pro yeah, okay. in the B1, okay. yeah. Thank you. Does this whole sort of thing, if you will, does this pertain to so some of the buildings in the center of town are kind of old? So if somebody ever came in and bought those buildings, so said, we're going to we're going to tear these buildings down and redo them, is that's part of it? Is that yeah. part? Is that yeah. part? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because we are not we're not when we go into this, we're not just going to look at vacant pieces of property. We're going to look at you know, properties that already have buildings on it, somebody wanted to redevelop how they would do that as they well. Tear it down. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, in some cases tear downs make sense. Yep. Um, maybe in some instances it might be an addition to it, you know, going above. Um, and there are, I know there are some property owners that are interested in doing those things. Of course, the sewer is one of the things. Yeah, I was going to say sewer is That huge was the big hole. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, so the ability to have that available. I, mean, I think we have, I um, feel like we have a little bit of, I'm going to call it larger, but this might be a window for us with this sewer we're working on. So okay. I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm sure you'll be back to us for that because I think this yeah. EPA holds a, a special permit for that and its capacity and its use and who who can tie into it and who can't. Yeah, and that's that's part of what we're. Uh, remember, yeah. Who, who is it? Who we is do. It? Oh, 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 yeah, if you remember back, you were, both you were on the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was, there was yeah. a special yeah. permit that actually identifies who can and who cannot use that. At the time they they initiated, they limited it. So that would I'm yeah. sure. I tried to with the force. So as you know, <laughs> you're right. There was a lot of there was uh, multiple amendment uh, modifications, and yeah. there's a lot. There's quite a bit of history with this with that. So that's part of the legal work that we want to make sure we take the proper steps. Who we need to go to and so forth. So I, I, I have a question, which I'm 90 percent sure the answer is no. But when the state gave us the grant and we developed or renovated or whatever we did to the town center did we make any allowances and put any underground um, piping to accommodate future needs other than we i know we did some uh, electrical, electrical conduit that was empty for, for actually for communication lines okay right. yeah. but did we do anything that would accommodate needs as it relates to the expansion no. of no. the sewer system no, no not for sewer that's a completely different so conduit. you have to open it all up again yeah yeah That'd be only conduit <laughs> about that with the time cuts but yeah. i'm just saying yeah. you know yeah. it, it's it's so short-sighted yeah. at the time when yeah, you no, get things all yeah, dug up to no, say, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, let's put a pipe that accommodates gas and let's put yeah. a pipe in that accommodates sewer. And, and so you spend another 100000 bucks and you put in a bunch of piping and it sits empty. It's there and it doesn't require when future needs uh, would merit, it doesn't require digging up the whole town. So. Good point. <laughs> Amy, do we have anything from uh, Bob McGee with regard to 25 Rockwood Road or... Uh, no, nothing yet. Okay, we didn't submit anything today. Okay, okay. This is on the uh, the corner boardman. We're still just waiting for the easement from the owners of 42, so that we can um, a permanent easement on that property. So we're just waiting on that. So the the remaining item we have is we have some minutes from November 14th. So if everybody can take a minute, take a look at those. I also see we have October here. What, what is that? Oh, that's me. Okay, that's got for it. you. That's for me. I got it. All right. Boy, Mr. Cleese was busy that night, huh? <laughs> He's the only one there. <laughs> Boy, thirty-eight minute meeting. My goodness. <laughs> Don was very gracious to attend to be our fourth member attending that meeting. He, uh, along with Bob and Mike, we were hoping Medora would show up, but she didn't. Well, he, you told us we didn't have said to you had enough. Yeah, he Listen, said enough. <laughs> that's how I maintain Don my came. air of mystery. Don came. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written um, for the meeting of November 14th, 2018 of the Town of North Fork Zoning Board of Appeals. Can we approve them or can you, can you, do you want to accept them or approve them? Approve them. Okay. You were going to accept them. I was going to accept them as written. As written. <laughs> as written. Okay. So do we have a second? Whatever the hell he said, I said. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. And um, I have just have a, a, a question. Um, the what is the name of the proposed development on 144 Seekonk? Is uh, Lake? Is it Lakeland Hills? Isn't Lakeland Hills, yeah. Yeah. Lakeland Hills versus yeah. 82 Cleveland is 84 Cleveland. 84 Cleveland is Lakeland Farms, Lakeland right? Farms. Lakeland Farms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hills, it used to Hills be and farm. Farms, my friend. Hills versus Farms. Okay, I just want to understand. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. Lakeland Hills and Lakeland Farms. Right. So yeah. yeah. Although they did file the notice of project change to combine also. Right. So I don't right. To in order to uh, and eliminate the apartments. Yeah. Okay. Lakeland. Hills. Hills. Okay, okay. Oh, we yeah. haven't seen it yet. No, we haven't. That's okay. That's why. Nope. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. I'm saying that. Right. Thank you for the clarification of that, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. At this time, I would like to uh, look for a motion to close the public hearing of December 5th at 7.56 p.m. for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Go for it, Don. No? Let's say so moved. Anybody? So moved. Second. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Hear you very you. much. Hear Thank you. you, Chris, very much. <clears throat> Have a good evening.